Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. Just bought this Calistro. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Number five bench plane off of Amazon. I have yet to open it, so if you're interested, stay with me and we'll check it out together. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. In the recent past, we have reviewed an Amazon Basics. We reviewed a Stanley Handyman, all with the attempt to see if there was an inexpensive plane that I could feel good about recommending it to somebody to use as a uh, daily bench plane in their woodworking. So, uh, and if you haven't seen either of those reviews, we'll leave a link below so you can check them out. This was the next one that was being recommended or asked about. So we ordered it, brought it in, and now the idea is to go through it and examine it. And based on how it comes and how much work it would take to get it to work properly, if possible, is this something that I could recommend to somebody as an inexpensive alternative for someone looking for a decent bench plane. So here we go. Okay, so this was $70, and I don't, somebody may have opened it, it wasn't me. Uh, just examining the box to see what it says. 14 inch long, number five, includes two blades. Oh, I didn't know, realize that. I wonder if they're talking about the blade and chip breaker without knowing it. So it doesn't say anywhere on the outside where it's made. Now this little card just has the pieces broken down, numbered, and named. So let's see what we got. Um, I, was this packaged in more? Mm -mm. No. So there's your extra blade. We'll check that out. There's one that's already in it. I wouldn't uh, say that the packaging is anything great in terms of protecting a plane. Open plastic bag. Okay. There doesn't seem to be much of a coating on it. Uh, I'm biting my tongue. There is some rust on it, so that's that uh, would be an issue if it was going to be in the box for any length of time. There is, there's no, it seems to be dry, so there's no coating of anything. I have no idea what the handles are made out of, but I would suggest that they're not uh, terribly well made in terms of woodwork. Okay, well let's break this apart. We'll go through them piece at a time and give us, you know, give me, I'll give you an honest evaluation. This sole is almost exactly 14 inches long. It is two and a half inches wide. I would expect it would be a two inch wide blade. As I mentioned, I have no idea what the handles, the rear hand, the front handle and the rear tote is made out of. It's loose, but that's not a big deal. We'll see if we can tighten it. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that this is really awkward to have that screw sticking up above because typically you have your handle like that and that would cause a blister with very little amount of time. So that, that's not a good thing. You want that to be set down below the surface. Um, let's take the lever cap off. Uh, we'll check it and see what uh, how flat it is on the bottom side. It's remember we're, this is an inexpensive plane. I think we paid seventy dollars as I mentioned, so you're not going to get a whole lot for that. But the question is, will it work? So uh, looking at that piece, not terribly impressed. Remove the blade and chip breaker. This is the old style chip breaker, which is really high. You usually don't see a bump like that. The newer ones just have a recess on the bottom side. We'll take that apart and go through it, set it up. Now there's, you got, there's an awful lot of rust on here and there's some, there's some really bad nicks on there as well. And I don't, I can't imagine this having been used, but they definitely need to put some kind of a coating on there. The uh, lateral adjustment lever, that doesn't move, so that piece is fixed. 
it's a, a, maybe a little bit better than the real cheap ones, which are usually just one piece of steel bent in several different directions. There's a washer down in there. So I'm trying not to be overly critical, but that looks pretty rough. Looks like it was drilled with an ax. Okay, let's take the rear toad off. Oh, no, it's not much of a slot in there. So when I look at stuff like this, you can see how they've, or at least they, they attempted to chamfer or do a countersink on there, but I'm not sure how you can operate a countersink and get three quarters of it and leave part of it still there. So that's uh, rough to say the least. Again, I have no idea what type of wood this is. Kind of a reddish brown. And this is not the absolute worst I've ever held in my hand. Okay, let's take the frog out. So the reason this is important, the frog, this 45 degree piece, is what supports the blade and presents it to the wood. And depending on how well it's held to the body of the plane determines whether or not that blade is going to be allowed to vibrate in use. So you want some fairly close machining. So we got rust here. And there are one, two, three, four contact points. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to take this piece off for a minute. This is the adjuster knob. This is the thing that moves the blade forward for a heavier cut or retracts it for a lighter cut. Just, I want to be able to put this in place and see if I can feel. Yeah. I don't feel it rocking. So, although it's not the greatest setup in terms of uh, machining and lots of support, at least it doesn't rock. So, when you tighten down those screws, it should, it should seat properly. There's a lot of really crude machining, if you can even call it machining. And I know I'm being critical, but when you look at something like this, it's pretty easy to tell if, you can, if you're comparing it to something like a Wood River or a Lee Nielsen. And mind you, they cost more, but at what point do you say it's worth it to spend more money and get a, a good plane? Now we have a look at this. Again, they need to, they need to uh, put some kind of rust proofing on this or they're going to end up in a situation where planes are going to come back to them because they've started to deteriorate. Now, I'm going to put a square on that just to see. We'll check and see what the uh, side looks like to the sole. And that's, that's, let's see how bad this is or how close. I'm going to start with a sixth thou. So sixth thou would be a sheet, a paper, and a half. So I'll hold this tight on the sole, and I'm going to drop this down. Okay, so when that touches up here, I can still easily move that six thou. We'll just try one more. We'll jump up to eight. Okay. Now I can I can get an eight to move in there as well. So that's out a considerable amount. I'll just check the other side since we've got this in our hand. And that looks to be about the same. Um, well, may, as well have a, may as well have a look at the sole. Now this really needs to be put back in place to give it a, a fair shot, but that doesn't look too bad. It's always the best test is to actually try it and see how it performs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together. I don't see anything glaring that needs to be fixed. When you look at this yoke, 
it's not, uh, it's what I would call a little bit on the flimsy side. So if you had too much pressure in your lever cap, there's a chance that that may bend in operation and it's quite sloppy, but it'll probably do the job. Of course, our biggest task is going to be getting this blade set up and the chip breaker mated. Now, in case you're interested, I'm going to guess and say that that blade is about 80 thou, but we'll check it. Dial this in. It's actually 91 thou, which is a little bit thicker than what you would typically find in, a, in an inexpensive bench plane. So whenever you drill and tap a hole to fit a machine screw into it, there has to be a certain level of tolerance in order for it to operate. But if you look at this, and that's in there, even if I move it in all the way, so it's going all the way through, that's still really sloppy. So that's, that's what I would call pretty poor machining. In fact, if you look at the threads on some of these screws, that's not exactly what I would call precision work. But again, you're talking about a sub $100 plane, so I guess you can't expect too much. Now, in putting this back together, I was looking at the frog and I said, gee, that's not 45 degrees. So if I put my protractor on there, measuring off of this sole, and eyeball that so that it lines up at the face of the frog, you're looking at about 49 degrees. So I'm not sure what their intent was. It certainly wasn't being sold as a high pitch plane. And also when I look at the casting, um, not the greatest. In fact, if you look at this part of the throat, this is the part that actually puts pressure on the wood fiber ahead of the blade in a situation where you close the throat down in order to prevent tear out. And that's actually been, if you, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it, when you reference right here to this sole, this is actually dipping in. So that would almost negate the effect of that. And it's a pretty crude, crudely cut opening. Overall, the machining on this is not the least bit uh, impressive. And I'm going okay, to... Okay, before I put this together, let me show you the results. There was a second blade. And that was so out of flat. I tried... We have a uh, expensive disc sander set up just for doing metal. And that was my attempt. And it was just, no, it's not worth it. That's how bad it was. Now this is the one that actually came in the blade, so we had to go in and regrind it. It was all rusty, but we took it up to 16,000 grit using a Charlesworth um, back bevel. The, the chip breaker, or back iron, whatever you want to call it, cap iron, um, didn't take that long. Managed to get a polished strip right across there, and then I went on the back and just get rid of the burr. So that's, uh, that's okay. I'll put that together and bring that up. Relatively close. Uh, I have to say, everything about this plane just has a real feeling of, of cheap. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. So there's the lever cap. I did the same, I did it on a um, disc sander as well because it was, it had a big bump, but I managed to get it out. So what we want is to apply pressure uniformly across the chip breaker so that that transfers out to the cutting edge to help stabilize that. So let's go ahead and put this in place. You wanna make sure that that's laying flat on the face of the frog. Don't over tighten that, at least not in the f initial phase when you're trying to adjust the blade. Now by spinning that in a clockwise rotation, that's going to advance the blade. Ooh, what is that? I guess just a piece of paint. Just gonna go in there and clean that out a little bit. Try 
Try this again. Okay, so by sighting down the sole, I can see the blade right here. And I'm going to get it so that it appears to be parallel to the sole. I use my lateral adjustment lever to make that correction. And I'm going to retract it all the way so it's not protruding at all. I'm going to wax the sole just so that it moves a little easier across the wood. This is a piece of soft wood. And as I'm planing, I'll slowly advance the blade and watch to see where the first bit of shaving comes out and that'll tell me whether or not the blade is parallel or if it needs to be adjusted. Okay, so the shaving is coming off on the left. So what I'll do is just move that lever just a bit. Still heavy on the left. Now, listen to the sound, take note of that. I'm gonna have it I'm going to compare it to a different plane. You hear that high pitched? Now, let me move that a little bit more. That's still wanting to just pull on the left, so. Well, I keep moving it, but it keeps. Okay, that's a decent shaving. And actually the, uh, the plane feels okay. It's not, uh, based on the performance, I don't think the sole is out of flat any great amount. Now, let's try this on a piece of maple. Track the blade. And then do the same thing, slowly advance. Okay. See if I can retract it a little bit. That was a little too heavy. Now, on something hard like this, this is where it starts to fall down a little bit. And I suspect the problem is that uh, the contact points between the frog and the sole and the way the blade makes contact on the back of the frog, there's a lot more stress being applied to the blade in this hard wood. And as a result, it's not performing terribly well. It's jumping around, almost like the blade is, is vibrating within the plane. And it'll dig in and pop out and dig in and pop out. Now I'll go back and try the uh, softwood again, just to make sure we haven't lost the edge on the blade. And indeed, the problem was just because it was a harder wood. Well, the blade has started to break down because we're getting... A ripped up shaving. I'm advancing the blade a little bit more each time. All right, let's take that blade out. I'm just going to take my finger now. I'm going to carefully pull it toward me. That doesn't feel bad. That's actually held an edge. Mind you, that's not been a lot of work. But I'm going to just, for sake of comparing, this is a Wood River 5.5. You'll hear the difference in the way it cuts. You don't have that high pitch.
much different feel. Let's try it in the hardwood. Now, it may take me a minute to clean up this surface. I'm pulling the blade in each time to get a thinner cut. Now that blade in this plane has been sharpened on the same stones to the same level. And that's the kind of performance that you're gonna get. So that uh, this was not meant to be a comparison between the Wood River and this. I just wanted to give you uh, an example of how a premium plane is gonna sound under the same circumstances. So the question is, would I recommend this? No, is a quick answer. If all you're gonna do is work softwood, you could probably make it work. Uh, if you're gonna deal with hardwood, I'd say no. Nope. And the average beginner doesn't know enough how to go in there and fix all the problems in this. Um, now, I just, call me a tool snob, but uh, something like this just really, yuck. Everything about it is so poorly built. Uh, there's no precision anywhere. If you can prepare a plain iron as well as we teach, then you can make it work in softwood, but not in hardwood. Would I buy it for myself? Absolutely not. Would I recommend it to someone? Not if I like you. Why? Because you'll probably get more discouraged trying to use this than uh, if you didn't. So my suggestion is save your $70 until you can afford a better plane. And that's all I can do for you on that. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.